Hi guys, it's three o'clock, so you know what time that means. It is our home safari time. So my name's Cody. Welcome to the Flamingo area uh, during our Flamingo breeding season. So it is the end of zoo babies, even though the zoo's closed. Um, these guys really don't care about that. They're going about their business as they normally would. Um, yeah, you know, it's a little crazy times for us right now, but these guys are kind of going about their business as usual. I mean, all of us in the birdhouse, I mean, our hair's all a little bit longer. My beard's a little bit grayer. I've probably gained the quarantine 15 or COVID-19, whatever we're calling it nowadays, but the flamingos don't care about that, which is the great thing here. So it is breeding season. So as you can see, we've got our main nest area for these greater flamingos. They're the tallest flamingo species on the planet, which is really cool, from Africa. A really, really awesome species. You can get a good look at some eggs here too. So we have 13 eggs right now. Um, we are in the hatch window for one of those eggs. We still have, uh, you know, I'd say a week or two for most of the eggs that catch up. We had one early egg this season. Uh, but you can kind of see there, there, I like to call them flamingo penthouses or flamingo high rises. They make these nice mud mounds. They raise them up. Um, a lot of times uh, that area will flood. So the higher the nest, the better the nest, obviously. And that's kind of what's going on in here, which is, which is pretty awesome. Flamingos being one of my favorite species. They're really, really cool bird species. Um, I've been lucky enough to spend some time with them. Not greater flamingos, but lesser flamingos in Africa. Uh, it was part of the, the Kimberly flamingo crisis that happened last year. Um, so that happened, it revolved around flamingo babies too. There were 2,000 flamingo babies that were orphaned in the Camphor Dam area of South Africa. And basically what we did, a giant international zoo response, a bunch of folks from different zoos across the world got together and we basically went out and uh, helped those flamingo babies, helped raise those babies. So a lot of really cool folks. Uh, shout out to some friends from that. Holly from the Oklahoma City Zoo, Kylie from International Bird Rescue, and Joy from the Columbus Zoo. And uh, shout out to Lori Park Zoo there in Midrand. They were pretty awesome hosts and got to stay and hang out with them during that time. So really, really cool species. Um, it's really cool doing conservation work in their natural habitat. But again, greater flamingos, and it is breeding season. You're getting some really good looks at the eggs. If you guys have any questions during this time, just uh, type them out on that Facebook Live and we'll get to those uh, as many as we can today. Um, really fun facts about flamingos. I've been finding out some stuff about this colony, which is pretty fascinating. Our youngest bird in here is going to be uh, a year old next month. It's one of, the, one of our youngsters, so we've had a lot of youngsters over the years. Our oldest bird in this exhibit, which just blew my mind because I've never looked up some of the ages on some of these guys. The oldest bird in here is 40 years old. Where is it? That is crazy. It is a uh, red 20, which we'll, we'll find that bird later. She's probably in the back. Anyways, one of our females hatched in 1980. That is crazy to think about. So if you think about their natural habitat and their natural lifespan, you're talking 30 to 40 years in their natural habitat. In zoos, they can live up to be about sometimes 50 to 60 years, which is pretty cool. The oldest flamingo ever in a zoo, ever oldest greater flamingo, was at the Adelaide Zoo in Australia. And that bird, when it died, was 83 years old, which is crazy to think about, 83. That's, that's bonkers, really. Um, but yeah, so our oldest bird at 40, so she's got a lot of life to live yet. So a lot of, a lot of good stuff there. But again, it is breeding season, so it is zoo babies. No babies on the ground right now. We do have 13 eggs out of the 15 nests that we do have. Uh, we have about 57 birds total uh, here at the zoo. Um, out of that 57, 32 of those hatched here in Cincinnati. So that's not how many chicks we've had. We've had a lot more chicks throughout our history, but 32 chicks out of our current group right now hatched here at the zoo, and quite a few of them spent time on my dining room table. So species of flamingos? There are different species of flamingos. Like I mentioned, the lesser flamingo, we've got the greater flamingo, there's the Chilean flamingo. Uh, there's quite a few of these different species of it. But again, greater flamingo here, the largest, uh, the tallest of those guys. They're very, very tall. Joanna wants to know, what do they eat? So here, luckily at the zoo, we have our feed pool over to the side of the, the pool area. So that is a specially made for zoos flamingo chow. It's uh, basically a, a nutritionally complete pellet. 
Now, in their natural habitat, they eat a variety of things. There's not a bunch of pellets floating around their natural habitat there in Africa, but a lot of cool stuff that they're gonna eat, a lot of different crustaceans. You can think of like krill, like little little tiny crustacean stuff. They eat a lot of algae. So they eat a lot of different, different uh, organic material that way. And you can see with their face, they have a really interesting way that they eat. Notice they're sticking their head in the water upside down. They're basically moving water back and forth across these bristles, almost like a baleen whale. If you think of whales, you know, they, they suck in a lot of water and get stuff trapped in that baleen. Very, very similar process. And you can see these guys doing that right now in the main pool and also in the feed pool. Great question. Kelly's wondering why some of them have gray legs. Excellent question. You are very observant. So with those birds that look a little different, not as, not as pink, not as whitish pink, they look a little bit more gray. Those are some of our younger birds. So they have that for quite a few years. Uh, once they reach maturity, they're gonna have more pink legs. You can see some of them with gray legs. Those are some of our youngsters. So uh, there's a really small one over here that's probably, I can't see his band, but I would guess that's one of our youngsters that's gonna be a year old next month. These taller ones that have the gray legs, they're gonna be your two year olds and three year olds. So yeah, those are just some younger birds. Not in the, notice they're like watching what's going on in the, the breeding area because they're basically learning. This is kind of a, an educational thing for them is to see what's going on, to see the whole process of pairing up, to see that pair bonding, to see nest building, to see incubation. So it's a really good thing that they're all just kind of hanging out together. I love this question from Nicholas and Hannah. They're asking, why are they so stinky? Why are they so stinky? <laughs> they must uh, have been here before. <laughs> yeah, they've totally been here before. Yeah. This is definitely a, a, a stinky area, but <laughs> when you have, you know, around 57 birds in this, this space, it's kind of a lower space. There's a lot of water, there's a lot of mud, there's a lot of poop. That's like the perfect combination for like a sweet smell of flamingo there. Violet wants to know, does the whole flock help to raise the chicks or just the parents? So basically in the, the very beginning, once the eggs hatch, the chick is going to stay with whatever parent is incubating or uh, brooding them at that point. So what you'll see is the chick will stick their head up through like their, their wing feathers and they'll basically feed them that way. And so they kind of hang out in that little spot there. But then they do something very similar to say penguins. Uh, once the chicks get a little bit older, they all kind of congregate together in what's called a crash. So they'll move around uh, and all the flamingos will kind of keep them kind of together. The parents will be the ones that are doing the feeding, but they all stay in this like large group. It's almost like flamingo chick nursery, you know? It's kind of like a, a daycare, if you will. Mike wants to know if they're skinny legs, like do they break easily? Flamingos are pretty tough. I mean, honestly, you're not gonna see them doing a lot of uh, jumping up and down and uh, you know, traversing crazy rock cliffs or anything like that, but they're, they are a very sturdy animal. They're a lot sturdier than what they look, uh, but their legs are very fragile. I mean, the bones are still hollow like most bird species. Um, so they're very, very lightweight because a lot of the time, you know, these guys have to be lightweight because they're doing a lot, a lot of flight in their natural habitat. So again, very, very, Kind of delicate legs, but again, they are they are pretty tough, though. Honestly, I mean, in my career, um, I haven't seen that too much um, with any sort of leg injuries. Honestly, so tougher than what you would expect. And I should point out too, uh, one big question we always get is a lot of times people ask why their knees are backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's on there, right? Leona yeah. wanted why to know they, that. Why are their knees backwards? They are not backwards. What you're seeing, that joint in the middle of the leg, that's their ankle. Their knee is higher up in the body. So everything from that joint down, that's all foot bone. That's kind of crazy to think about. But yeah, that is their ankle. So it's not their knee bending backwards. That is their ankle. Kylie wants to know if they're friendly. Can you interact with them? You know, flamingos, uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, breeding season wise, they are not cool with us whatsoever. So anytime I have to go into the, the, the nest colony or the, the nest area, they definitely don't want me in there. They defend their nest site like anything would. Um, but you know, here at the zoo, we do have interpretive flamingos. We do our flamingo parade. And so you can't really run up and give them a hug. But like most of the animals here, you're not giving any animals hugs really. Uh, but they're very kind of they're okay with being around us uh, for the most part you know anytime i have to navigate this exhibit i just walk really slowly the birds kind of move uh, from this way to that but uh when they are nesting they do get a little bit more aggressive like quite a few species aubrey wants to know how do they sleep how do they sleep well you can see uh 
There might be a couple sleeping right now. It looks like a couple on the nest might be taking a nap. So, oh, there's actually one in the very back. If you notice, he's got his head laying on his back. He's kind of all the way in the back there. His neck is like in a weird shape. Um, so you've got them sleeping, standing up. They can sleep uh, sitting down as well. There's one sleeping right here as well. Or he might just be resting. But anyway, they tuck that, that head back all in between their wings. And that's a, a very comfortable thing for them to do. And also, it's very comfortable. A lot of times, you'll see them sleeping just standing on one leg. And that's kind of a weird thing, but that's also a way for them to conserve body heat it's called thermoregulation. They bring a leg up into their, their feathers. They wrap those feathers around that bare leg, and that helps them uh, from losing um, heat from those legs. Vivi wants to know if the chicks can walk as soon as they're born. They, not as soon as they hatch. Uh, at about day one, though, you'll start seeing them stand up, and they're very, very mobile very quickly. But that first day of hatch, the, the hatch process is, is an incredible thing. It's got to be one of the hardest things in the natural world, in my opinion, just the whole hatching process. Like, it is physically taxing. So first off, in the egg, you've got an air cell, and there's a membrane. You have to break through the membrane first. It's kind of a, an elastic kind of rubbery, think of a rubber band, how that stretches and it's pliable. So you have to get through that first. So you break into that, you get the air cell, you take your first breaths of air. Then you gotta break through the outer shell, which is crazy. So hatch is like a two part process. And then by the time they hatch all the way out, they are completely exhausted. So even if they could stand up, these guys aren't gonna be doing that um, during that, that whole process. Cause it's uh, again, super, super taxing. And then again, after they hang out underneath their mom or dad for a, it's about a day, uh, you'll start seeing when the parents will stand up, the chicks will be standing up as well. So they're very, very quickly to, to become immobile. Good question. Harper wants to know, do the moms or dads care for the eggs? So both of them are going to do that. Mom and dad both. They're both incubating. They're both bringing food back to the baby. Um, they're kind of similar to penguins again, where they're throwing up in their face, essentially. It's a really great way to, to feed your babies. Try it at home, moms and dads out there. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Michelle's giving me bad looks on that one. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> Elizabeth wants to know, what is with all the noise they're making? Yeah, they're very vocal animals. Flamingos make a lot of noise. Um, that's a very typical flamingo noise. Um, so we have 57 birds, and you hear how loud it is. So again, earlier I mentioned I was in South Africa working with flamingo chicks. We had 119 in one space, so imagine how noisy that was. That was even more crazy than this. I mean, these guys are pretty loud, but yeah, 119 chicks, that's... That's, that's wild. Claire wants to know, do they have any predators in the wild? Yeah, a lot of different predators. Luckily, these guys have the ability to fly, so uh, they can get away from quite a variety of things. There, there's a long list, of, long list of predators for these guys. Sophie asked, do they all have names? Not all of them. We have a very sophisticated numbering system here at the zoo. Uh, so every animal that you see at the zoo has what is called a... a, a I want to say the, the uh, species identification number. Um, basically, it's a six-digit number that lets us know who's who. Uh, if you look at our flamingos, we have bands on their legs, different colors, different letters. That's letting us know who's who. Uh, there are some of the birds in here that do have names. There's a, a flamingo in here named Squirt. If I see him, I'll point him out to you. We also have a flamingo named Taffy. That was one of our last chicks that we raised that you might have seen on our social media feed or on our YouTube channel. So definitely go look back to that stuff because we've got a bunch of videos of flamingo chicks. So after we're done with the home safari, definitely check that out because tons of videos on our social media channels of flamingo chicks. So since there's no chicks out here now, you definitely have to check that out after this is over. A lot of people can't really see what we're looking at. And a lot of people are asking, do they have eggs right now? Yes, there are a ton of eggs. So pretty much everybody that's sitting down right here in this space is sitting on an egg. We do have 13 eggs right now. Um, the first egg is at the end of the hatch window now. So if he's gonna be hatching, he should be coming out right now as we speak, but I'm not seeing any activity from that. So hopefully still fingers crossed for that one. But then within the next week, we should start seeing a, a bunch of stuff, which again, keep your eyes peeled to our social media channels because as soon as there's babies, you're gonna start seeing them. 
Alex wants to know how many bones in their neck do they have? Do you know? Excellent question. I was hoping somebody would ask that. So if you notice, again, some of these birds are, they have their head tucked back on their laying on their back. They've got that crazy like S curve going on with their necks. So flamingos have 19 neck vertebrae. When you think of a giraffe, you know, large mammal, a giraffe only has seven neck vertebrae. Because a giraffe is a mammal, they're just like us. We have seven neck vertebrae. Flamingos, though, have 19. So that gives them that huge range of motion. That's why they can do all those crazy, crazy maneuvers. They don't straighten out and like stiffen out like they do on uh, Alice in Wonderland, so you can't play croquet with them. That's definitely not something you can do. Um, <laughs> Uh, and our last, <laughs> our last question I is... I was laughing too, but you I know, it's see. hard to do these without a crowd to laugh at me, you know? Like my stupid dad jokes, right? <laughs> our last question is from Eli. He wants to know, are these endangered? These guys are not endangered. I want to say they are very common right now. Actually, double-checking that. So they are, they are not endangered. Um, doing, doing somewhat well in their natural habitat. But still, one of those species that we do want to make sure that we uh, are caring for here in the zoological setting. That way we can be ambassadors for them in their natural habitat. So uh, we're going to wrap things up. Again, thanks, thanks so much for hanging out with us on our home safari today. There is a really cool nest building activity that you guys need to check out. And I would love to see some of those uh, recreations of a flamingo nest that you guys do at home. So please share that with us on our channels. Definitely uh, check back uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock because we'll be doing another home safari. Uh, you guys know the drill at this point. 3 o'clock, it's home safari time on Facebook Live. So definitely check it out. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day and uh, stay safe out there.